You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Where the Demon Lurks. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> you won't get away with this. I have rights. Koba will find a way to save me. Silence him. Oh. The shadowy bunny can stand up to King's mouth and subsequently gags him. Hmm. <laughs> Do you want me to send him back to Earth? Yes, but not now. Our laws state that he has to go back, but nothing is written about when that happens. What are you planning, Vendrake? Vendrake points at King once more. So you really believe he will come and save you? Well, dear boy, let's see him try, if he lives long enough to even do so. Vendrake walks back to his seat and summons the desk to its original place. Lock the mortal up somewhere, Fortis. See that he's taken care of until Kobu is dealt with. Where exactly do you think I'm supposed to put him? We didn't build dungeons for keeping living mortals. Just stuff him in the pantry for all I care. Figure it out. Fortis scowls but remains silent. He walks over to King's squirming form and throws the alpaca's body over his shoulder. <laughs> Fortis opens the portal. Wait! Huh? What's wrong? We don't know how a living mortal's body would react to the magic of our portals. Even more, even more, so, after, even more so after I just turned him back from a disc. Besides, if he's staying, I'd like to run some experiments on him if I get the chance. So I definitely need him to remain intact. Mm. Uh, let's take a rain check on that, Amare. But sure, the long way it is, then. Fortis walks out of the office with King hanging from his shoulder. So, are we done here? For now. Amare and Knox both open their portals and leave. Left alone, Vendrick sits in quiet contemplation. That mortal's unwavering glare remains stuck in the demon's mind. You stare at your empty hands where your friend laid a second ago. It feels almost unreal how everything fold unfolded so quickly. You scream and beat the ground until your hands are red sore. King! <laughs> I can't, I can't scream right now. My friend is in the other room playing Sons of the Forest. You can only think about how you failed once again, and this time someone else was caught in the crossfire. Your breathing is shaky, but the amount of air you're quickly pulling into your lungs, you would have thought they failed you. Your vision is blurry, thankfully not from lack of air, but from the tears that have been welling up. Your mind freezes, trying to process an impossible challenge, until you hear it. A weak groan. Turning your head slowly, you see that it's coming from the person who shot King. A miracle! Your breathing is under control now. Your mind begins to focus. You feel the urge to wrap your hands around that bastard's throat, but you don't. You need answers. You seize him by the collar of his shirt and pull his face close to yours. You! Why did you do this? Why did you get King involved? What sick promise did Vendrick make? The person blinks and then opens his mouth without saying a word. His gawking is getting to you while he, while he starts to sniffle and cry. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Where am I even? You killed my friend. Why did you make it? Why did you make a contract to become a freelancer? K kill? I don't know anything about that. I just did it as a goof. I just wanted to prove to my friends that the ritual was fake. You rise to your feet and drag the pathetic person out the door before throwing him onto the street. If I ever see you in this town ever again, I'll send you to the underworld myself! The person screams as he crashes into the pavement before running away. You stumble back into the store. The leg begins to buckle as you're forced to grab onto the counter to hold yourself up. Thoughts and emotions return like an unwanted guest, knocking eagerly, eagerly at the door for you to open it with your mind's eye. You clutch the left side of your chest. Huh? Your ears pick up the sound of something vibrating. Scanning the room, your eyes fall upon the weapon left on the floor. You walk over and pick up the cursed eye. The device starts to shake from the force of your grip. You want to throw it hard against the wall and be rid of it, until you realize that something is displayed across the eye. A blue text reads, Unknown non-demon entity sent to a mare labs for investigation. You blink several times and reread the sentence. Sent? It said King to the Underworld! He's not dead! The news revitalizes your spirit. Without a shred of doubt, you decide, to, you decide you need to get to the Underworld and bring King back. But how do I get back down there? A brief spark of hope is at risk of blowing out. Even if I get there, I doubt Amara would just let me leave that easily again. Hmm. I need help, but who? One second, y'all. Water time. Oh, yeah. Delicious water. The Angel Lucian. He was sent by God. He could be a powerful ally. But what about Morris? He's been in this town for a while. His tricks and knowledge of magic could come in handy. 
Maybe he knows a way to save King. Then again, the two of them would the two of them would have their own agendas. Both want something out of you. Maybe it's better to call in the favor Toast owes you. Oh, uh, actually, wow, this is a uh, huh. Uh, damn, y'all. Okay, so you get some choices. I wonder who's the best option to go with. Um, so right now, let me pick. I'm going to pick um, Lucian. Okay, I'm certain that Lucian can help me. You rush to the back room to get your bag and head out the door. I oh, remember that you can't do that and leave the store closed. What am I doing? You pull out your phone and call Mike, asking him and his sister to cover your shift due to an emergency with King. They agree to help without asking too many questions. You quickly clean up any possible mess there with their mess there was of the scuffle. After the pair come over, you take your leave and head for the Lazarus warehouse. Night encroaches with every passing second. You walk as fast as you can to your destination, all the while your mind is pestered with thoughts of King being imprisoned or tortured in the underworld. Once you arrive at the gates of the workshop, you see the crowd of workers ex exiting the premises. The warehouse takes on an orange hue from the rays of the setting sun. This building is wide enough to fit an entire football field, and King once told you this is where many eateries, this is where many eateries such as the shopping mall and Sunny Fruits get their produce. From the sea of blue-collar workers, you spot Lucian waiting at the other end of the gate, looking at his feet. You wait for the crowd to thin before approaching him. Lucian! The dog turns to you and smiles. Kobu, you came. Finally, I've been waiting for so long, people started throwing coins at my feet. Ready to return and settle back in at your old job. Right, about that. Listen, can we find somewhere more private first? He notices the serious look in your eyes and stands upright. All right, come with me. He leads you around the compound's exterior to an alley filled with shipping trucks lined up back, lined up back to back. After making sure no one is around, the angel the angel leans against the back one of the the back one of the nearby vehicles. You uneasily focus on his feet rather than meet his gaze. Why do I get the feeling this isn't about going back to the underworld? There was an attack at the store. The angel raises an eyebrow. What? A freelancer came and it shot King. A freelancer? Yes, those demons that make contracts with mortals so they can use their bodies to roam the earth. Let's see, actually. Freelancer. Freelancer. It's a code word referring to demons who make contracts with mortals. Filling a mortal's wish in exchange for possessing their bodies for a set amount of time. Or so they say. Most of the time, the mortal gets put in a situation where they regret taking part in the contract to begin with. Generally, low-level demons aren't allowed on Earth outside of company business. The Demon Lord can send out demons as freelancers, but must fill the necessary documents in triplicate. Additionally, each demon who has been approved must sit through orientation on how to be a mortal. Real snooze fest or so, I hear. There's even an hour-long talk on the importance of blinking. Although, I wonder how many thugs Vendrake sent in order to find me. One of them came, and now I think King's trapped in the underworld. How do you know this? You pull out the eye from your bag and hand it to Lucian. He gives it a spin and even a quick shake. The eye somehow looks bemused by the ordeal. Indeed, if this is to be believed, whatever whatever it shot got sent back to some laboratory. He tosses the eye back to you, and you store it snugly within your bag. That's why I need you to help me get to the underworld and save him. I don't know what's going to happen to him while he's down there. Oh. One second, y'all. More water is needed. Ah, no, don't fall over. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> okay. I don't see why- I don't see what there is to worry about. Not all mortals end up there eventually. Not like this. Also, how dare you? We demons swear to minimize interference with mortal lives. That especially means not killing them. There, there. If, it, if he isn't supposed to be in the underworld, then Vendrake has to return him. He wouldn't. Not without checking that King knows about me. If Vendrake finds out, he would never let him go. You clench your fists tightly. All this fuss over a single soul? Why does this mortal mean that much to you? Unless... I see the shadow of the angel moving closer, looking up the angel smirks. Unless, do you have feelings for him? This isn't funny! You're right. It's an unnecessary mortal emotion. The whole idea of a demon in love with a mortal is a fairy tale. Lucian steps back and, regain, and regains his regal composure. Can we focus? He's my friend. He's in danger. I have to save him. And you'll do anything to bring him back. Yes! Lucian tilts his head upwards. His stern gaze places a strong pressure on your shoulders. No matter how hard you try, the feeling doesn't go away. He has you right where he wants you. Then I'll help you. If you return to the Underworld and take your place back as Demon Lord. As he speaks those words, the cold look in his deep blue eyes gives you goosebumps. That means... 
an eternity back in the underworld, stuck behind your lonely desk staring at paperwork. When you had Vendrake's aid, you were messing up over and over again. If you were to face it alone, would you single-handedly bring the underworld to its knees? Worst of all, could you live could you live doing something that you feel no love for any longer? Your lips tremble at the thought of going back. Silently, you slip your hands behind you. Okay, I'll go back if you help me save King. Lucian's tail wags happily. Perfect. I can't wait to report back to Gary. He'll be so ecstatic. Maybe he might even consider me for good boy of the year. You simply look at him without saying a word. He remains unaware that you have your fingers crossed behind your back. Where do we go from here? To your home. What? But King... You are in no shape to be doing anything else for now. No way. We don't have time. We need to... Lucian flicks a finger on your forehead and you fall onto your back. The king isn't going anywhere, and you know it. Now, let's go back to your place so you can rest. There's much to do before we even reach the underworld, and I need you in one piece to do so. You have nothing to say. Getting up feels like a monumental task now. Maybe he's right. Not that you would admit it to him. He extends a hand out to you to help you up. Fine, but you're sleeping on the sofa. I don't mind, as long as I can finally take a warm shower. You're way too relaxed about all this. Ah, uh, contraire, Kobu. The smell of grease and gas is starting to fuse with my clothes. It's so unbecoming of me. Really? Your clothes? Well, forgive me, but us angels have more sensitive noses than others. He bends close to sniff you and quickly pulls back, his face as pale as a sheet. You lift your right arm and smell yourself. What's his deal? Walking back to the warehouse entrance, you manage to hail a cab to take you both back home. Hey! You hear a familiar voice somewhere out of reach. King! Hey! The voice comes in like a crashing tide before receding away from the edge of your consciousness. Your senses are numb and unbothered. A new sensation emerges, a growing tightness that pushes down in your chest, soon accompanied by an, a by an aching weight that breaks your stasis. Wake up! Your eyes flutter open. Huh? Lucy? It takes a minute for your eyes to readjust to your lit room. Lucian's face comes into clarity. The angel's nose is alarmingly close to yours as he sits directly on top of you. It's Lucian. You were mumbling that mortal's name in your uncomfortable slumber, tossing and turning. Oh, was I? S sorry. You drape your arm over your eyes. Oh, what time is it? About an hour to midnight. Ugh, I can't believe I slept that long. And neither could I, particularly the fact that you need sleep at all. Lucian pulls himself back and stands. You follow suit with a heavy groan. Hey, sleep is great. I'll knock it until you try it. It's a waste of time. And by the way, you're home. It's... He spins, his, he spins his wrists, trying to come up with the right words to say next. Small? And dilapidated, more like it. Ugh, it's a decent place for a convenience store clerk's salary, you know. Hmm, and I see your finances are well spent. Yeah. His eyes trail off to a pile of video game cases stacked haphazardly in the corner of the room. Your shoulders droop under the weight of Lucian's judgmental gaze. That's not important. It's my money. I can do whatever I want with it. How the mighty have fallen. It looks like you spent your years on Earth collecting junk. What is this? Lucian pulls out a jar with a figurine in it. Ah! That's nothing. It's just a joke I was showing to King. It doesn't mean anything. You try to shake the toy out of the jar, but it keeps getting snagged on the neck. The urge to smash the thing on the floor is palpable, but just as you look about the room for a place to chuck it, you catch the angel safe shaking his head. Defeated, you bury the jar underneath the beanbag top with a pile of unwashed work clothes. Well, Kobu, since you're fine, I'll return to my guard duties. Guard duties? What's up with that? What's up with that? <laughs> you didn't really expect me to just sit around while you slept, did you? I've been using my powers to set up protective charms around the apartment. Oh, thanks, man. Sounds like an exhausting job. Huh. A few dozen charms is nothing for an angel of my caliber. He says that, but upon looking closer, you notice his entire torso is drenched in sweat. He isn't fooling anyone. Hey, it's late. Why don't I cook us something to eat before you before you go on watch duty? Eating is for mortals. You don't need it. You know we don't need it. Hang on a minute. Aren't you borrowing someone's body? No, this is my own. And you haven't been eating or drinking since you got here? Nobody ever questioned that? It's not like I stopped to talk to the locals. I was too busy searching for you. And now that you found me, you'll stick out like a sore thumb in a town of people you s if it's the town of people see you avoiding food like the plague. Lucian throws his nose up in the air. Preposterous. I'm God's best angel. I don't need to put up an act, and I most certainly don't need food. Hey, who's the demon lord here? 
Cuh. Fine, but when Gary asks, you had better give me a glowing appraisal for being so receptive to your needs. You shake your head. You just sit right there. I'll get us something. Sauntering over to the kitchen, you let out a loud, let out a, loud, a long yawn. The sleep was not enough to refresh you completely. He perused the cabinets, contemplating what to make. Something instant would be easy. Your hand reaches for the cupboard, and you pull out a little silver kettle and a cup of instant noodles, miso flavored. The gentle bubbling noise of boiling water dulls your senses. After all that's happened, the normalcy of cooking offers you a brief respite. A few minutes later, you walk into the kitchen, a piping hot cup in your hand. You motion to him to join you and is sitting on the floor. Here, eat this. He reaches to take he reaches to take the spork and cup from you. What's this? It's instant noodles. Considering you haven't eaten anything before, I picked out something mild for you. Miso flavor. He raises the cup and sniffs around the rim. I smell seaweed, some spring onion, and something else I can't put my finger on. Oh, quit smelling it and eat it. The noodles are going to get soggy. This still feels ridiculous to do. It's one of the best ways to blend in with everyone here. Plus, it'll keep your energy up. Not sure how it works for your for our kind, but it's fun and feels good. When Lucian takes a deep breath and his shoulders fall. Alright, y'all. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Also, y'all, let me know the how how like drastically the story changes depending on who you call. Anyway, y'all, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!